we start with the quarterback. This was one of those if games. I think a lot of us were thinking that, that thinking that throughout this game that if Michael Pratt was healthy and available, Tulane probably wins this game against Ole Miss. It's hard not to think that because they were in it for so long. And then once Ole Miss kind of realized what they needed to do to condense the field a little bit, it became hard for Tulane to move the ball. And Michael Pratt, if you look at him the first game of the season, everything he did was outside the numbers almost. You look at this game, everything was inside the hashes. Kai Horton did not push the ball down the field really at all. Um, we're going to get into that a little bit later with just some of the adjustments they made throughout this game. But I thought it was a big issue for them. And then once they figured out how to take away the seams, take away the middle of the field to stuff mm -hmm. up the hashes, they had a really hard time moving the ball. He went 11 of 29 in the second half. I really think that was the difference. And I think maybe Pratt makes a couple throws. Like the score ended up being a little bit lopsided, but they were in it. They had opportunities and they just needed someone to capitalize to keep pace. And they just couldn't in that fourth quarter. Even just having a guy that can take over a game. Michael Pratt has proven that he can be that guy that can tilt things at halftime and put things in Tulane's favor. Now at halftime, Tulane was up and was rolling. And the big question was, we kind of knew Ole Miss was going to figure things out at halftime and make the second half adjustments. They did. Tulane did not seem to be ready for them. A lot of that has to do, though, when you put in a redshirt sophomore quarterback in Kai Horton, who he's been thrown into the fire before, but when you don't have that consistency with an offense and truly a different quarterback than Michael Pratt, we know that Michael Pratt is that dual threat. He's going to be somebody that can move around in the pocket and really be effective in the run game. Tulane was not effective running the ball. So what did we learn about the redshirt quarterback in Kai Horton? It seems like maybe they can draw up a plan for them to be successful against maybe a lesser opponent in Southern Miss, but man, that's a tough situation to be in for him. Yeah. I, I think they can win a game with him. I think they can figure it out. I think he probably learned something about himself too. Like he, he did kind of stand in there against a top 20 team. It, it's an sec team. He's a yeah. backup quarterback at Tulane. He gave him a puncher's chance to win. I mean, I, I think there's things if, if he looks at it a certain way, there's a lot of reasons to take confidence out of this game. Obviously he, he's not, He's not Pratt. He's not no. going to be Pratt. But yeah, I mean, I, I don't feel terrible, terrible about him coming out of this game. I don't want to like take a moral victory from it because like it definitely wasn't, wasn't enough and he's not going to win these type of type of games against these types of opponents. But like going up to Hattiesburg, like you're probably OK. You should probably feel good about going against that type of opponent. For me, it was the lack of experience. One of the things that really stood out to me is that when Kai would scramble, he, just get rid of the ball. Stop having these negative yards and just negative throw it away. Be comfortable throwing the ball away and resetting and getting back to the line. You don't lose anything. And I think that just has to do with youth and him not being used to those things, him just trying to hold on to the ball, forcing something to happen, trying to make something happen. Sometimes you're just not going to be able to. And we saw that with the wide receivers really not being able to get much separation against a talented SEC defense. What do you think about the interception? It was one of those, I'm trusting that my wide receiver is going to be where he's supposed to be. I'm not even going to look. I'm going to throw it. And that's exactly what happened, in my opinion, because Kai threw it. He just turned, had that read in his head, threw the ball. A lot of people were saying on the broadcast when I was listening back is that Lawrence Keyes was meant to like cut back. He never looked back. Lawrence Keyes was just running straight down on a go route. I mean, was never pumped the brakes. So... I don't think it was one of those Kai Horton was expecting him to check back. Maybe it was underthrown. I don't know what was going through his head, but you can't make those mistakes where you are just lobbing the ball up right to where a defender is. And then you're like, oh, what am I doing now? Like to me, it was just one of those dumb mistakes that he probably wishes he could get back, but you can't just blindly throw a ball up against an SEC yeah. defense. It was as bad of an interception as, as oh, you'll kind of see. Yeah. And you're right, but it's tough to know. Like, is he just completely on a different page with the receiver? Are, are they doing two different things? Is somebody not reading the leverage the right yeah. way based on the coverage? Like somebody wasn't doing something because like you said, receiver's going and he's throwing it back and he just threw it straight up at the DB that was standing there. Easy it, catch. Yeah. Easy catch for the DB there too. And you can't have those kind of mistakes in a game like this. It's, everything is a pressure cooker and yeah. you do something like that and poof, like it that quick, the game can be over. Yeah, that was one of those games. If they drive down the field and, and score this game is still in two lanes reach and it's just, they were never, when you don't find the end zone in the second half, that's kind of your own fault. You're shooting your own foot off. And how are you going to win a ball game when you can't find the end zone in the second half? They had one field goal. That's not going to keep them alive against an Ole Miss 
uh, offense that has Jackson Dart and that super, super talented wide receiver and Trey Harris, who, as we saw, can take advantage of a lesser opponent in Tulane. They are a group of five, not a power five school, but Tulane had an opportunity to really, you know, stake their claim on a national stage. And to me, yeah. that's the most disappointing thing is that if they win this ball game, they most likely move up in the top 25. Now they're completely out of the top 25. Also want to mention too, Ole Miss moved up three spots. That's saying a lot about this Tulane team. Look, when you just see the final score, it looks like a blowout that Tulane really wasn't, you know, had a fighting chance. If you watched the game though, and I believe that somebody who is a voter was watching this game because it was close at halftime. It was Tulane won the first half, Ole Miss won the second half. And it, to me, it was just one of those things that just didn't go their way, but credit to Ole Miss getting the win in a, in a tough environment. I think Horton's probably kind of a tough guy to block for too. Mm -hmm. It seems like they, they usually block a little bit better. Obviously they're going against a much better opponent. I thought Prince Pines was really the only guy on the offensive line that kind of like held his own a little bit throughout this game, but there was a lot of pressure. Some of it, I, I think was, was a little bit of Horton's fault too as well. Was there anything that kind of stood out to you about just kind of the, the offensive line, the blocking, the, the, the run blocking, just the O line performance in general, the run blocking was really bad. I mean, the offensive line really didn't get a whole lot of push. I feel like we're talking about the saints yeah. this, this week, yeah. the, when you have 2.5 yards of carry, I mean, that's just not going to cut it when you have a young quarterback under center, especially with Kai Horton getting the put it, being put in a situation he was in. This is one of those games where if, pass game or the run, excuse me, if the run game is not complimenting the pass game, you're most likely not going to have a lot of success on offense because then Kai Horton is going to be feeling a lot of that pressure. It's one thing when, if you have a running back that can come in and move the chains for somebody like Kai Horton, but it just wasn't happening. Yeah. So I thought the interior offensive line had a, had a really tough day. Sincere Hainsworth struggled. Uh, I thought Josh Rimitich struggled a little bit. There's just a lot of pressure throughout there. Another guy on the O-line that I thought kind of had a little bit of a tough day was uh, Cameron Wire. Like, they just got to be more consistent. And again, this this is probably the best opponent they're going to see all year. They're going to go in and play their conference games and probably be much better, be totally fine. You know, I, di I didn't think pressure was a huge issue the week before. Ole Miss is just a different, yeah. it's a different caliber of team. I thought they were good enough kind of overall. But yeah, I mean, I thought there were times, that, and you kind of pointed this out to me, so I'm going to steal your line here a little bit, but like, I thought the quarterback was holding the ball a little bit too yeah. long sometimes. Like some of the pressure is self-inflicted and someone like Pratt's going to make a little bit better, more, more rhythm throws and stuff like that. But it was surprising to see some of the, the amount of time he held the ball because like they weren't really doing anything down the field at all. And if you're going to hold the ball and you're going to stress out your offensive line, you kind of need to get that quality of play, like yeah. the chunk yardage. And they, they just didn't really get that in the game. So I think just, you know, another game playing together, preparing another week with the quarterback back there with this offensive line, they're going to probably get a lot better. These issues are going to solve themselves a little bit, but it was definitely a dicey day for the guys up front. Hey, the good news is they've got a great guy leading the charge with the offensive line. Somebody we know very well, Dan Roshar. Yeah. If anybody can get that fixed, it's going to be him. But speaking of coaches and coordinators, we got to give a nod to the special teams unit. Greg McMahon came in and has done just an incredible job with this group. Now look, Tulane special teams has always been good in the last few years from what I've seen. It's been a group that has not struggled, especially with the return game, which our guy Jaquan Jackson, which who, who will be here in a little bit. That's where I think Tulane is a real threat is, look, if you've got Kai Horton in for a few weeks, where do you maybe decipher and have that edge against some of these opponents? Bring it on on special teams. I mean, we saw Jaquan just how much separation he can get in the return game and just how speedy and slippery he is just avoiding tackles and things like that to me like that's where I think it's going to help this offense with field position and things like that no doubt I mean that's that's the hidden yardage game too and yeah. if you can make the field shorter and you're getting these returns makes it a lot easier for your offense everybody's gonna just kind of have to lift up a little bit and, and you know carry some of the the weight and just find different ways to be better and more effective and yeah like you said Jaquan's a great returner it's something they they gotta just you know I don't know how you lean on that, but you can kind of lean on it a little yeah. bit when he's that consistent. So he's going to have to find his consistency, be explosive. And every time someone goes out there, they're going to have to kind of be thinking, hey, like, how can I make a play? And that, that needs to be at the forefront of his mind. For sure. Let's get to the defense because you and I were both like, wow, we had a ton of wow moments in the first half, specifically with the front seven. They were just able to do like stop everything that was that was coming their way. Minus minus that big play from Ole Miss at the very beginning of the game. After that, they kind of settled in, and it was like, 
man, Tulane has a really solid front seven. And then you get to the second half and it's like, all right, maybe the heat is getting to them a little bit. We were talking about just how hot it was on the sidelines. They have a new turf out there. The ground's a little harder from what Jaquan was telling us with that coconut turf. I don't know if that played a part as far as just like the heat coming off, but it just seemed like they were gassed in the second half. And I, if I'm Willie Fritz, like I'm getting after my secondary this week because it was just a poor performance. Yeah, I thought the secondary was was a little bit shaky overall. Um, you know, let's start up front. Like I thought Darius Hodges and, and Patrick Jenkins. Yeah, they, I thought they were both great. I mean, Hodges coming off the edge, he had four pressures, including uh, on that big third and five incompletion that that you know gave Tulane a chance to stay in the game late. They just didn't capitalize on it. And uh, look, I've been talking to scouts in the NFL. Like Jenkins is somebody that that people are like really high on, like a legitimate NFL type player. He had six pressures. I, I saw as I went through the game. I, I thought he was outstanding i thought the run d um jackson dart gutted him like uh, you know when he kept the ball but like handing off their running back is like one of the best running backs in the in the all of college football you have 48 yards on 18 that's carries. huge like that that's was a big number yeah if you if you said that going into this like you would think that they had a chance to win yeah. this game and they, they kind of did so i thought that was you know solid but yeah the secondary i thought I thought uh, Jerry's Monroe was already gave up two catches for 44 yards. Uh, I thought Lane Robinson, I think he played like 18 snaps and Lance uh, Robinson had Lance had Robinson. A, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. He had a, he, I thought he had a good day. He did. Yeah. He played like 18 snaps, but he, he was solid the whole entire yeah. game. I thought maybe he was their best player in the secondary in that game, but the safeties were eh, like, there were just, yeah. you know, a, a lot of inconsistencies. There was a couple things for me that broke down with the defense first. And this was through the entire game is the passing off of the wide receiver or whoever the threat was like there was a lot of confusion between the cornerbacks and safety as like, all right, I'm going to follow this guy. And then it'd be the wrong time to follow him. And then you'd leave somebody else wide open. And there was a, a guy in open space. And, or if the cornerback was passing off the wide receiver, the safety wasn't picking him up and you left that guy wide open. Num that to me is the biggest thing that I think is probably going to get talked about this week is Tulane prepares for uh Southern Miss now is about to say Ole Miss Southern Miss and the second biggest thing for the defense that credit to Ole Miss for picking this apart at halftime I'm sure they said hey look this is the part of the field that's wide open in between the linebackers and and the corners and safeties there was so much space and they yeah. were just picking that apart in the second half like just shorten the field a little bit like I, I, I don't I don't know it was a lot of a switch of cover one cover two but no matter what, whatever they were in, there was just too much space between the linebackers and the safeties. It's you got to somehow clean that up or at least recognize it. And I mean, the coaches on the sidelines can tell them like, Hey, go up a couple of steps or Hey, punch up five yards. Like it's an easy to me transition to make. Obviously I'm not the one on the field and I'm not the coach with the headset, but those two things get fixed. And I think this can be a really dangerous defense, but you can't just rely on your front seven to handle everything and everything behind them is a big question mark. Yeah, you're right. Like when your corners are, are playing, man, your safeties have to be playing, man. Like you yeah. need to know what's going There's on. So much there, there can't be like, oh, like I, I thought we were playing cover two zone here, but no, we're in two man. And like, it's just, you got to know what you're doing and, and they yeah. can't have these little moments of confusion, especially against an opponent like that, where, you know, I watching that game too, like we were talking about it, like it, it felt like just, they were kind of white knuckle on it through the first half. Like you can't loosen your grip no. at all on anything and a little mistake against like an opponent like that, that can be explosive and make plays can't afford it. So you can't make self-inflicted mistakes. And there were just way too many of them down the stretch of that game. And they just kind of, you know, it kind of felt like Ole Miss knew that like at some point, like the wheels were going to start rattling on the bus and, and they did. And, and Tulane just kind of just let off just enough to kind of let them pull away. Quick injury update. Linebacker Corey Platt is out for the season. A torn Achilles. What's the deal with Achilles this week? I Tough mean, that's, week for Achilles. is it something yeah. on turf? It's something to, to look into. I know like the turf grass battle is a huge conversation in the NFL. Maybe it needs to be a conversation at every level because you now have, we've seen it. You just, got an outdoor stadium, like just put, put just down put, some grass. Right. Yeah. Like I understand like the, the logistics with the Superdome, like where are you going to put the grass? Like, you know, in some places where you have the space to have like the tray that rolls out and you yeah. can do all that. Like, where are you going to do that at the Superdome? You can't really, it's a little bit too late to cut open the bottom of a 1960s building and like make something that can slide in and out and all that stuff. But Tulane, like what, like just pull it up and put it. down real grass. Real quick, another nod to the defense. They held Ole Miss to one of 13 on third down attempts. Pretty good. Like I said, we, 
we were highlighting the defense as we were standing on the sideline there in Yolman Stadium. Like, this is really impressive. Like, this group, even losing their defensive coordinator and adding in a new guy who kind of has an entirely new uh, philosophy for how he wants to run the defense. To me, that's been, re been really interesting that they – Maybe haven't missed a beat, but man, secondary's got to get has to has to get corrected real quickly. Nick, with Michael Pratt and the knee injury, we were able to see him. I mean, he was jumping up and down on the sidelines. We saw him jumping off the bench on the sidelines. When you have, we presume it's an MCL injury. When you have an injury like that, is it more of what can you manage far as pain wise, or like what it what you're trying to? I guess my question is. What what is the limit with an MCL in injury? I mean, usually it becomes like, can you go? And then once you can go, like, are you risking injury? And if you aren't risking yeah. injury, it's it, it's what you said. Like, can you manage? Can you can you do all that stuff? Look, they need him back though, like quickly, <laughs> quickly. Because like, just listen. It's like I went through. I charted all his passes. Horton completed one pass beyond like 15, 16 yards throughout this whole game. Threw a pick on one on a, on another attempt. Going up the middle, he just did nothing. And like the stuff outside the numbers, like he had nothing beyond eight yards outside the numbers going up the field. And then you go back and you look at Pratt and like everything's upside outside. Yeah. The so if you aren't stretching the field and you were just kind of like condensing it, you become much easier to defend. That's what Ole Miss figured out in this game. That was a difference. So if Pratt can play and handle it, like they need him out there as quick as possible. And the wide receivers are built for Michael Pratt. These wide receivers are not making contested catches. Yeah. I hate to say that because we're about to have Jaquan Jackson on here. Jaquan's not the tallest guy. Neither is Lawrence Keyes. You do have the two young guys that we've been talking about that are the only ones that really have the length and can get up and fight for the contested catches. Maybe they start bringing those guys around a little bit more and give them an opportunity, but they are young. They are inexperienced. Can they go up and make the contested catches uh, confidently? We don't, we don't know that, but guys like Lawrence Keyes and Jaquan Jackson, they're built for a quarterback like explosive Michael plays, Pratt. Yeah. Explosive plays. That is how, that is how Tulane had the successful season they had last year. That's how they won the game. Well, they also had Tajay Spears, who took over in the Cotton Bowl. But we'll see what happens. They, they need to figure out the run game. They've got too many running backs to not figure it out. They've got four really talented running backs right now, and they're all very different. Figure out who who's working well and who's not. Figure out the offensive line issues. And I think Tulane can go in. They're, first of all, they're wanting to beat the Southern Miss team bad. This is one of the losses that – Tulane had last year and it stung. The only other loss was against Central Florida, which they ended up beating in the conference championship game. Southern misses the game. I believe it was week four. It was after they beat Kansas State and they're on this riding this high being actually might have been week five. They're riding this high of like being compared to the old team in 98 that like won all the uh, accolades and awards and had an incredible seat undefeated regular season. And then they get punched in the mouth by a lesser opponent in Southern Miss. And they've been thinking about it and circling this game since last year. And now they get to go to Southern Miss and hope to kind of flip the script and do things uh, in, at Southern Miss's place this week. So last thing before we bring in Jaquan, are you higher, lower, the same after, after seeing this game? I'm disappointed just because of what was what was at their reach you win that ball game against Ole Miss and Tulane is solidified a spot on the national stage I know it's crazy to say that they haven't solidified it yet on the national stage but look they're out of the top 25 I mean you beat Ole Miss at home with a redshirt sophomore I believe redshirt sophomore quarterback in Kai Horton it's it's a statement win and, and it's an and it's an opportunity for them to stay in the top 25 and potentially go on another run like they did last year. Yeah, it's tough because you, you win this game and you have a chance to do like what yeah, Cincinnati did, yeah. you know, and that's, that's asking a lot, but right. you have a chance for it. Like you beat this one and then you're looking at the schedule and you're like, where are the roadblocks? Like there really are no other ones. So then it would have just been about like Tulane just not beating themselves in, in yeah. any game. And it, it's disappointing. I, I thought they had a chance to win this game, but it's, I, I feel unchanged about them. I mean, like you were competitive in a game with a backup quarterback mm -hmm. and I think they're too good to be like a moral victory type team. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to give them that. Like I respect them too much to do that, but I don't think it, it changes my view too much overall. Like I feel like it, it was, it was an understandable loss. It was closer than the score said, but definitely disappointing for sure. Yeah. Tulane, as we said, to start this segment had an opportunity 
if Pratt was in, probably would have won this game. That's yeah. probably what's going to sting the most when they when they look back and and see this all shake out. But Kai Horton handled it last year against Houston when Pratt went down. Just couldn't handle it against an SEC opponent. All right, we're bringing in Jaquan Jackson next. Jaquan, let's just get right into it. How bad have you guys been wanting to get it at Southern Miss after last year? Um, it's been a long time coming, you know. I'm very excited for this week. Really very excited to play our rivalry team and just just playing against Coach Hall and the other um, coaches that we had on our staff. But it's just amazing um, just to see them because, you know, like I said, um, like a father figure when they was at Tulane and just helped us out, you know. It's, it's all love, but mm-hmm. at the time they're enemies when we playing them. But um, – Got to get that bell back to uh, Louisiana. Yeah, Battle of the Bell. Before we get into too much Southern Miss preview, tell me some just of the positives that you can take away from the Ole Miss game, even though obviously we can get into the negatives a little bit later. But it for the first half, you guys were in command of this game. Um, I think we played well, you know. It was just to the end, we just didn't finish the fourth quarter. Um, They outscored us, and... That's one of the things we can work on, just finishing um, the fourth quarter. Always, Coach Frisch, the main thing is the plan to win is win the fourth quarter. And what are a couple of things? I mean, you guys obviously lose Pratt during the week, and you go to a different quarterback. What are just a few of the things that you thought you guys did well on offense throughout the game? Not even just us, but uh, I think the coach prepared us well. You know, always when uh, your number get called, you got it's your opportunity to, to make it the best, you know. Um, but a lot of things we did, we – Started fast and made the plays early on in um, the first half, but just leading on to the second second half, we just was I think we just got complacent instead of keep our foot on the gas, we just let off a little bit. But that's football, you know, it, it, it goes both ways. Some 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 games, some games it go the opposite. So we just got to control what we can control. But um, from that learning experience that we learned, just just got to go back to work, you know. Yeah. On the flip side, obviously we can talk about the second half. What went wrong? offensively for you guys like what are some of the things that Ole Miss changed that made it difficult for you guys to move down the field um they really didn't change nothing um I just like from my standpoint I could say that um the drop balls played a lot of a lot to it you know we, we made them plays we stood in the game um but just like I said it's football you're not going to catch everything but when the game's on the line you got to make the big plays yeah it's, it's we did see some good things from Kai Horton Maybe it's holding on to the ball a little bit too long and just not it to me it's inexperience with Kai Horton as to why he wasn't able to be successful against an Ole Miss defense, specifically in the second half. Do you think that he can flip things around and what can he do well against Southern Miss? Obviously a little bit lesser of opponent than an SEC team, right? Um, yeah. Um Kai 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 is a great quarterback, you know. Um, just as you said that just he's getting his feet back wet, you know. It's yeah. been a long time since he played. That was the Houston game last year that he Help us win, you know. Um, but anybody we put in the game, we trust them. No matter who that, who's that quarterback, um, that's the one thing I like about our team is just we we just believe in them. We just gotta give them that confidence, you mm-hmm. know. It's it's hard for somebody who hasn't played for so long into like a live game where just the bullets flying at them. Just so on the sideline, we're just trying to keep his confidence up, you know. It's just you get discouraged because. It's your first game playing in a while, yeah. and you just seeing everybody come at you. You be like, "Oh crap, I gotta do, I gotta do that." You just, you good, man. You good. Just one play at a time. Seems like he needs to find his edge. That's something that you have, and you've talked about with us on this show. Even when Tajay Spears last year, you would tell us he was waking you up in the morning and taking you out of bed and <laughs> getting some extra work in. With Tajay not here, and you still wanting to keep that edge, what are some of the things that you're doing to make sure that you're still at the top of your game? Um, same thing, catch jugs every morning and just meet well, one of the things I did this year, like meet more just um with um my receiver coach Coach Sherm, you know, just really getting an understanding why we calling this play and what down we're gonna call this play and versus this defense, what's their leverage and do their nickels, uh mm-hmm. the cornerbacks travel and what safety play to this side, that side. Just really so when I get to the game it's like we worked on this all weekend, it's just in my head, just going back to the South Alabama game, we knew there was gonna be playing 33 boundaries that the safety was going to come from the back side of the field. And I just had to beat the corner and just went, went on the post. But that's one of the things that, not even just me, but just as a whole offense, like we meet, we meet on Sundays. When a loss, we still come back on Sundays mm-hmm. and watch the film from that game into, and then the next game that we're going to play that week. So just nothing really haven't changed, just, just being me and the team just being them, you know, just got to push each other. Can you, can you kind of like take us inside your mind a little bit? Like when you're returning a punt, 
in your field and that like what are you looking at how are you setting it up you're, you're really effective at that so like how are you kind of seeing the field and like is it just all instinct or is it vision or is it a little bit of both um it's everything it's just a, it's a team effort you know uh, give a shout out to coach coach mac and coach chrysler um the special team coordinator um and coach sherman i um return um return a coach they prepare us well and shout out to the scout team because they give great looks each and every week and the whoever team we playing it's the same look that we see in practice that we see on game day so um it just just like i'm saying just replaying everything so we just just imagine everything during practice and then by the time game come it's just easy but um a perm return is hard i'm not I'm, I'm, i can't even sit here and just lie to you um it just over the times you got to work on it and just reading the nose of the ball if the nose of the ball is keep going up it's going to go further if it's down, it's gonna die, and it's different with left foot, left footed punters. It tell one way, but right footed punters it tell the other way. So it's just reading, just knowing a right footed punter nine times out of ten, if I'm mistake, and I'm not mistaken, it's gonna, I think it's gonna, yeah, tell, tell right. I mean left, it's gonna tell right, and the left foot is gonna tell right. I can't, I, I, I can't really. <laughs> I know it in the game, but most of the times it's gonna tell one way. But it's hard. Like the one that's the hardest is the Aussies. That's the the ones that a lot of Australian mm -hmm. kickers kick because they um overseas they that's all they do is just go train and kick all day. Like they really love that. But um just seeing it, just going from last week um we knew they was gonna kick the ball and we have some room to return it and everything. And just coach main thing was coach was talking about coach Mag was talking about just catch it and just do what you do. You know, um, that's one of the things I like about him. He just sit back and don't try to stress too much about we got to get a return. We got to get a return. We're going to get a return. We do our 111. We're going to be successful. But um, I love being back then. I love the guys who are out there blocking for me. Just like I said, it's a team sport. And without them blocking, I wouldn't be able to do the things I do back there. So shout out to them. You are very effective in the return game. That's something that we were talking about. No, seriously. And especially when you've got a young quarterback in, like you guys can maybe have an edge there and scoring on yeah. special teams, I think is probably going to be a high priority heading into this week. You mentioned Greg McMahon though, and what he's been able to bring. What are some of those things that have stood out to you and maybe have helped you in the return game that maybe you weren't noticing before that he was able to come in and correct? Something, it really, everything's the same, you know, um, just playing football, mm -hmm. like, it's different schemes and different concepts and different names. Well, I say it's, it's the same schemes and same concepts, but it's just different names and different things. So we just have to learn to, he always talk about, y'all know the song to to the record, you know, like, it's like this, that, to that, you know. <laughs> then we just sing the song after he says it. But um, he just bring, a, every morning he brings a, a lot of energy, and he I just love him. Just love him today. He's like, how you doing, my brother? You're going to be great. Y'all going to do your thing, you know. Um, But... Just his energy every day just make makes everybody excited, and then he he loves joking, and like he makes a lot of jokes, and we joke 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 with him. But um, he just want the best for us, man. And uh, the first day he stepped on the football field, you know it was gonna be like a, a great special team coach, and just the way he do everything. Like first time we went out there, we didn't do something right. We had to hurry up and get back in the huddle. Everything got to be efficient, hundred percent, like the alignments and the the details, the assignments. So. I, I like what he do. And just going through a game like you guys went through last week, you're in it. Like it, it seems positive for at least half the game. Like, is there any, anything you guys take from that game that I know you wanted to win. I know it's disappointing. You didn't win, but are there any positives? Like, this is what we learned about ourselves. We we can become a better team because of X, Y, and Z. Like, do, do you take anything from that, that experience? Um, we always take it from a wins or loss. Like when you have wins, is some, is there, there's things that you can, can fix always. And when you have losses is, always going to have positive and negative but um it's always sometimes it's always good to get a like I wouldn't say good sometimes it's, it's kind of good to get a loss because your mind just flip you know mm -hmm. just like last year we lost a set of missing after that we didn't lose a game since and but um everybody been locked in all weekend and I, and I love it you know um just knowing that is the the rivalry and just excited to play if you don't go out there and just be ready to play like busting through a wall <laughs> something ain't right like something not right but yeah based on the film that you've been able to watch i'm sure it, it's still early in the week i'm sure you guys are still dissecting some of the film is southern miss different at all from what you saw last year or is it pretty much a similar group mm, if i'm not mistaken i i 
think they have a new DC. Um, I, I can't remember right now, but same. Got a couple of players from last year that changed mm-hmm. different numbers, but it, it to me they're the same team. You know, um, a couple of coaches they added, but with Coach Hall got going over there. Um, it, it's great, but um, great de- defense, great nickels, great um cornerbacks and backers. You know, um, but one of the things they they play hard, like they good footwork, good hands. We just gotta um win. You know, outside on the perimeter and in the running game. How many times you hear Willie Fritz say no turnovers this week? Oh man, he says it every day. No matter. It, it was it, bad. It, I mean, that's um, that was the difference last year against Southern Miss. Right, right. Yeah, we had a lot of turnovers versus uh, versus them last year. But he always like, he always <laughs> talking about no turnovers. Ball security is key. He got the team in um in jeopardy if you fumble the ball. You know, um, one thing about him, he sticks to his script. He doesn't change. Like he's the same person every day. Mm. Even when we lose or even when we win, he's the same person. He just loves us. He just wants us to do better. You think this team can stick with it until Pratt gets back? You guys have faith in Kai Horton that you can yeah, win with him all, at, we, at quarterback? We, we have faith in anybody. The next man up is um that's one thing Coach Fritz talked about. Next man up, you just gotta do your one eleven and and man, all the quarterbacks we have, um, God forbid some minor get hurt, whoever steps up, we believe in we we believe in us and we believe in what the coaches have prepared us and told us to um to, to do to be the best uh player on the field that we can be and um that's so one thing I like about that. We always, every week we go through like, is, um, okay, the day before the game, they're like tomorrow, it's a walkthrough. Mm-hmm. And you got to be locked in to the point where coach might call kickoff return and Taylor might get hurt. Oh, Johnny, you in, Johnny, you in. So you got to be on your P's and Q's. Mm-hmm. So that's one of the things we I like about Coach Fritz. Like he always does something, but don't tell the player, but tell the coach that this person going to be going in and going down so you can have enough time to instead of you worrying, oh, I ain't got my helmet, I ain't got this. But um, I think he's he prepared us well and to be great, you know. All right, we'll see how it shakes out. Battle for the Bells yes, back ma'am. in Hattiesburg. Back in Hattiesburg. I'm sure these guys are trying to uh, make sure what happened in Yolman does not happen again in Hattiesburg. A little bit of a get back game a little bit. Yeah. 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 Yes, ma'am. Well, thank you, Jaquan, for taking the time, man. We'll see you guys next week. Thank you all.